Legends are not made overnight. They're built through hard work, passion, and an unyielding dedication to their craft. Tade Pogaccia embodies all of these qualities and more, making him one of the most awe-inspiring athletes of our time. With seven stage wins already under his belt in 2023, Tadej has established himself as a force to be reckoned with in the cycling world. Tadej's journey began at an early age, and it was clear that he was quite good. In 2016, he came third in the European Championships for Juniors, a race where many talents are born. The following year, Tadej turned professional at the age of 18 and rode mostly continental races, coming third in the Tour of Hungary as his best result. His first big breakthrough came in 2018 when Tadej Pogaccia managed to win the Tour de l'Avenir, a small Tour de France for riders under the age of 23. This race has produced many cycling greats, such as Egan Bernal, Nara Quintana and Greg LeMond. Tadej now joined an exclusive list of winners who went on to become legends. And also Tour de l'Avenir 2018. I wanted to say how great the race this was when I was racing. Uh, I did only one time, but uh, yeah, it was a really nice experience. Viva la Tour de l'Avenir! For 2019, Tadej Pogaccia signed a long-term contract with UAE, and they wanted to keep him for as long as possible. His initial contract was for three years with an unreported salary, but estimated to be in the millions. In the same year, Pogaccia participated in his first Grand Tour, the Vuelta a España. Many riders just want to finish their first Grand Tour, but for Tadej, he had bigger ambitions. He wanted to race for the win, and his performance was simply remarkable. The future of world cycling has arrived. When he won in Andorra, it was Pogacar the star. He now wins at Plataforma de Gredos, and it is Pogacar the superstar. He finished third in the general classification behind Roglic and Valverde with three stage wins, making a big statement in the cycling world. There are moments in sport that you'll remember for the rest of your life, and this is one of them. Set the Guardian on the incredible moment that saw Tadej Pogaccia win the Tour de France 2020. 2020 was a strange year, a pandemic made all major races of the year be pushed to later in the year. This meant the Tour de France was in September. This may have suited Tadej Pogaccia as he enjoyed racing at that time of the year, as his World Tour Espana result the previous year showed. The 2020 Tour de France was a battle of the ages, with Tadej Pogaccia, Primoz Roglic and Egan Bernal all vying for the coveted yellow jersey. However, Bernal's unfortunate exit from the race due to loss of form left Pogaccia and Roglic to duke it out in the final week. While Pogaccia looked strong throughout the race, he faced an uphill battle going into the last time trial, with Roglic holding a commanding lead of 57 seconds in the general classification. Many believe that Roglic had the win in the bag, but Pogaccia had other plans. With unwavering focus and determination, he pushed himself to the limit and began placing first in the time checks, raising hopes amongst fans that he could overtake Roglic. Pogaccia rode up the final hill faster than anyone thought possible. 24 seconds is what Primoz Roglic has in his hand right now. It's, it's turned red. It's turned red for the first time. Tade Pogaccia is up on Primoz Roglic. This is incredible. The last time this happened was in 1989 between Laurent Fignon and Greg LeMond. Pogaccia is producing one of the time trials of all time. And took the GC on the last day. It's a big disappointment. I gave it all, but in the end, he was just better said Roglic on Pogaccia's performance. It was a devastating moment for Roglic, but complete disbelief for Pogaccia as he didn't even believe it himself. Additionally, Pogaccia became the first rider in Tour de France history to win the yellow jersey, the white jersey and the polka dot jersey in the same year. This was the one single moment that put Tadej Pogaccia into the cycling hall of fame, becoming the youngest Tour de France winner. If you're enjoying this video, please do consider subscribing. It helps us out a lot. Now back to Bogacha.
In 2021, it was clear that Pogaccia was not slowing down. He started his spring with GC wins at the UAE Tour and Terreno Adriatico, showcasing his remarkable ability to beat riders in all terrains and do it so solo. He did show some signs of being human during the Tour of the Basque Country, coming in third, but quickly bounced back at the Tour of Slovenia, winning it easily. The Tour de France was around the corner, and Pogaccio and Roglic were two of the favourites. Since Roglic had won against him in the Basque Country, many thought that this could be his year, and during the first stage of the Tour, which was a hilly uphill finish, Roglic beat Pogaccio in a close finish. On stage 5, there was a time trial, which was the first true test and the first time there would be major gaps in the GC. Pogaccio was in a much better spot than Roglic and due to Roglic being caught in a crash on stage 3, it was time to show that last year wasn't the fluke. Roglic was a bit off the time of the leading rider Stefan Kung, while Pogaccia started to demolish his time. It was incredible disappointment for Kung, as he for sure thought he would win. It was another show of Pogaccia's insane talent, being able to win a flat time trial, something that not a lot of riders have the ability to do, especially not at the age of 22. Roglic had to abandon due to his crash earlier in the race. Was he playing down his injuries? Yeah, the yeah I think so, because uh, every time uh, when he came into the bus, uh, he, he saw him uh, suffering a lot and uh, was not nice to see a big champion like that uh, entering the bus after the stage. And also yesterday in the start, you saw uh, Primoz was dropped in the group, and I, I thought he was maybe uh, taking it a bit easy, but he told me afterwards that he was really dropped and uh, yeah, not uh, feeling uh, great and uh, all day suffering and suffering a lot. And now, it was an easy win in the making for Pogaccia. He won two more stages, both in the Pyrenees, and won the Tour with over five minutes to domestique but turned into leader Jonas Winnegard. Tade Pogaccia, the tornado from Slovenia, sets himself up for double stage wins, back-to-back -back wins in the Tour de France. He's conquered the mountains. He's conquered the Tour de France. Here he goes. Tadej Pogacar, they're sprinting back at him. Has he got enough time? Vengegaard is there. Tornado Tadej wins at Lusardi Den. In addition to winning the Tour de France, for the second consecutive year, Pogacar was also awarded Slovenian Sportsman of the Year for the second time in a row, and he finished off his incredible season with a monument win, winning Il Lombardia. In 2022, Tadej Pogacar had a strong start to the season, winning the UAE Tour, Terreno Adriatico and the Tour of Slovenia. He also performed well in the early stages of the Tour de France, winning stages 6 and 7 and donning the yellow jersey. However, on stage 11, Pogacar struggled and was dropped by the leaders, allowing Jonas Vinegard to secure the win on the day and take the yellow jersey. This marked one of the first times that Pogacar showed signs of weakness in the Tour de France. Pogacar was now in third place, over two minutes behind, which is a significant deficit considering his dominant performances in the previous year's tour. The next day was of Alpe d'Huez. Pogaccia was unable to drop Vinegard despite his best efforts. He says, I want some revenge, and now he's going to try and get it. Immediate reaction of the yellow jersey, Vinegard, another big attack. The white jersey of Pogaccia is trying to take back some time. Vinegard goes around that corner and matches him, gets right back on the wheel. Pogacar is trying everything he can to get some seconds back, but Vengegaard is still there. Despite Pogacar's win on stage 17, he was still unable to drop Vinegar and close the gap. Pogacar and Vinegar had a remarkable two-way battle, but Pogacar was unable to regain his dominance in the Tour, and Vinegar ultimately proved to be the stronger rider of the two, dropping Pogacar on the hotter cam on stage 18 and winning the stage by over a minute. There may have been several reasons why Pogacar struggled against Vinegar. One reason could be that Pogacar had raised a lot prior to the Tour, which could have affected his performance. 
Additionally, Pogaccia may have been struggling with fatigue or illness, as he did not appear to be at his best during the tour. And finally, Vinegar was a strong and talented rider, and Pogaccia may simply have been outmatched in the battle for the yellow jersey. Regardless of the reasons, Vinegar ultimately took the tour, leaving Pogaccia to reflect on what went wrong. Pogaccia has proven himself to be a resilient rider, bouncing back from setbacks to achieve great success. He showed his tenacity by winning the Montreal Classic and Il Lombardia again, even though some may have considered his overall performance in 2022 a disappointment. In 2023, Pogaccia has already started off strong, dominating the Ruta del Sol and besting his rival Jonas Vinegar in Paris. While editing this video, Tadej Pogacar managed to win his third monument, the Tour of Flanders, dropping Van Aert and Van der Poel on the final climb, winning it solo. It wouldn't surprise us if Tadej Pogacar wins Paris Roubaix in the coming week. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. But the question remains, has Pogacar learned from last year's failure and will he return to the top spot in this year's Tour de France?